Hey, Phil Steele here, and today I'm going to edit some of your photos in Lightroom. I reached out to some of the customers who own my Lightroom Made Easy course, and I invited them to submit a photo for me to edit. Now, if you didn't get that email, don't feel left out, because I have over 20,000 customers in that Lightroom course, and I didn't want to be deluged with photos, so I just reached out to a small group. But if this video turns out to be popular, then I'll keep making more of these, and you could still get your chance. I'll put some instructions at the end if you want to submit a photo. And by the way, if you did send me a photo of yours, don't feel bad if I don't get to it today. I can only do so many of these in one video, and I may get to yours in the future. Or it may just be the case that your photo was so good that I can't think of any way to improve it. All right, let's start out with an easier example. We're going to do this bear, but he's a pretty complicated one. So let me just switch to a quick and easy one to get the ball rolling here. Here's a photo submitted by my customer, Frank Korb, who is a high school photography teacher. And he said he wanted to use this as an example to show his students why you shouldn't be satisfied with a, an unedited photo. And I agree, this is a great example. There's a lot that could be brought out in this one to make it better. Now, first of all, as far as the overall shot and the crop, I think I'm gonna leave it as is because he described it as a bottom heavy composition, which it certainly is. But I think the sky could be brought out and make the sky pretty interesting. So I'm fine with this where it's two thirds sky and one third ground, which kind of follows the rule of thirds principle. And I think I kind of like the crop on the bottom where we have this road coming in and the way it winds over here at the right side, a little bit of a leading line, not in a traditional way you would think of a leading line, but it adds a little life to it. So I think I'll basically leave the crop alone with the exception that it looks like the horizon is not quite straight to me. So let me see if I can straighten it. Go into the crop tool. I'm going to click on the straighten tool and then I'll just draw a straight line along what appears to be a straight piece of the horizon there. Yeah, and you can see it rotated it a little bit. That looks straighter to me. Now, obviously the foreground is a little underexposed. Now, I could just come in and start brightening things up with the exposure, but that just blows everything out, especially the sky, so we don't want to go there. What I do want to do is pull the shadows up just to bring up this foreground. And look how beautifully that brings it all up, including these lens flares. I love these two red lens flares right here, which really start emerging as we bring up those shadows. Now, as always, I like to balance between the shadows and the blacks. We're losing the real black, so I'm going to pull black down. You can see up here on the histogram, the edge of the blacks is not really at the edge. You know, and you can see as I go too far, what happens where you start blowing the blacks on the histogram. I think somewhere, you know, where does it look good to my eye? Let's keep some black while lifting the shadows. That looks pretty good to me. Now, of course, the sky. You know, the sky has a lot of potential, but it's almost blown out, washed out. So let's see what we can do with the sky. Now, in the old Lightroom, I would have dragged a linear gradient down from the top of the sky and made adjustments using that, which was imperfect because your adjustments had to somewhat affect the parts that were not sky. But now that we have the new masking tools, I'm going to go into the masking panel. I'm just going to select the sky. No need to fake it anymore. Now I've just got the sky. Fantastic. Now let's see what we can do here. Now I could once again make the obvious choice to try to bring down the exposure, but I don't really, maybe a little bit of that, but I'm not sure that's really what we need. What we need is dehaze. So let's push up dehaze and you can see it gets very saturated and if we choose we can desaturate. Now I love what this is doing. It's taking this boring sky and making it much more interesting. The only downside is we start to get some noise because, you know, this is a JPEG, not a RAW file, and we're introducing a fair amount of noise up here into this part of the sky. Now, if you have a tolerance for some noise in your sky, you may like it just fine that way regardless because of what it did to the color. Or we could try to reduce the noise. Now, here's the strange thing. When I'm using this masking panel, we've got a noise slider here, and in theory, pushing that up should increase the noise reduction on this masked part of the image, the sky that we're working on, but I don't really see much effect. If I take it all the way down, I don't see much more noise than when I've got it all the way up. Maybe a tiny change, but I don't see much effect. And here's the strange thing about this. 
I know I can reduce the noise because if I come down, if I come down to the uh, detail panel and bring in noise reduction down here, look at that. I mean, that sky is creamy now. I'm not sure how much that comes through in the video. Unfortunately, I'm affecting the whole image, so I'm also denoising down here at the bottom, making this a little less crisp than I would probably like it to be. But this is a matter of personal taste. If you want your sky to not have noise and be really creamy and you're willing to put up with a little bit of softness down here in the bottom, then you could go here. And that's pushed all the way up. I could find some happy medium, perhaps. I'll try to reduce the noise in the sky without taking too much of the detail out of the bottom. And maybe maybe there's a happy medium right there. Now let me see how this is looking compared to, there's the before, there's the after. And I see one last thing that's bothering me. Maybe you can guess what it is. I'm gonna come up here and close that masking panel. Now I'm gonna grab the healing brush and this little piece of trash down here in the road is just bothering me. So I'm just gonna heal that thing out of there. Okay, that's better. And also this pole is distracting. So I'm just gonna take that pole out. I don't need that. So there we go. That's my finished version. Before, after, for, after. All right, now let's do this bear. This was sent in by a customer of mine named Jeff LaPointe, who took this beautiful photo of a bear cub in a tree in Minnesota. And this is a fantastic wildlife photo. Great job, Jeff. This will be a ton of fun to edit. And I also really appreciate the fact that Jeff sent me his edited version, which you can see here. And he's gone in closer. Let me put these side by side so we can see the difference. So here's the original, here's the edited version. And you can see some of the choices that Jeff made he obviously lightened it to get more of the detail out of the shadows on the bear. He cropped in closer so that the bear is closer in the edited photo. He took out this twig and this twig over by the bear's mouth, which was kind of distracting. So that's all great work. And all of those are improvements. Now, just out of the gate, some things I see that I might try to do a little differently. Look at the color of the leaves in the original and the color of the leaves in the edited version. I kind of miss the warmth and the vibrant green color. And also there's a certain amount of warmth in the color of the bear himself. And I think some of that warmth was lost during the edit, which is very common when you have to lighten exposure and uh, boost shadows, you can lose warm tones. So I might try to keep some of that warmth. And maybe the bear is a little over sharpened in the uh, edited version here. He's definitely needed a little sharpening and it's a good thing that he's sharpened up but I might try to make him a little less crunchy looking in my version. So I'm just gonna start going and I really appreciate Jeff sending me both versions because it kind of gives me a target. It helps me to focus and say, okay, do I think I could do better than this? So this is gonna be fun. I'll just start from the beginning and go through the edit my way and we'll see where it ends up. All right, first I'm just gonna make a virtual copy to edit on so that I still have the original sitting here as a reference. So I just created a virtual copy and I'm gonna use that as the one I edit. I think the first thing I wanna do is try to get the exposure of the bear's body and these shadows to the place where I want it. And the obvious thing to reach for first is the exposure slider, but you see what's happening. If I try to get the shadows up enough with that, everything starts getting blown out too much. I'm not gonna go there. I think we wanna work with the shadows slider here to bring up the darks without overexposing the light stuff. And I think, you know, and this is a matter of taste. All editing is a matter of taste. I'm gonna do it to what looks good to me. I'm gonna lighten these shadows up like that, but I'm also gonna pull the blacks down so that we don't lose the true blacks in the image. So I often do a little dance between lightening shadows and darkening blacks, which kind of offset each other, but you can find the right balance. Now let me compare to the original. Yeah, so, so all I really did was brought up the shadow areas on the bear a little bit by doing that. And you notice I haven't lost that vibrant color in the leaves and in the bear. Now I think I'll crop in like Jeff did just to get a little closer to him. So I'm just gonna see what feels right. And yeah, we've got these rule of thirds grid lines which are not a bad idea. I'm gonna unlock so I can crop to a different ratio. I don't wanna be tied to the original ratio. I'm gonna put that rule of third line right on his eye because why not? And I think I'll bring in this corner 
but maybe not quite as much as Jeff did in his version. I'm going to keep keep a little more of these leaves maybe. Now let me compare that to Jeff's. So he cropped in even a little closer than me, but I kind of like having a little more leafy context down here in the corner. Here's my crop, a little different from his crop. Now let me look at the original. You know, there's still, there's a little warmth in the bear in the original that I kind of like. And I didn't lose as much of it here, but I think I might want to punch up just a little bit in these colors. Now I could do the vibrance, which punches up everything, but the leaves start to go, the leaves start to go wild with the vibrance. So I might actually try in the HSL panel, this warm color, this sort of yellow or orange color in the bear's skin, I might just push that up a little bit so the bear himself is a little warmer. And this way, I'm not gonna make the leaves go into a crazy incredible green, but this way I've kept the warmth in the bear, which might have been lost a little bit by bringing up those shadows. Now, before I try to take out these twigs, which could take some time, I'm gonna go ahead and do the sharpening step. First, I'm gonna make sure that I'm at 100%, because you wanna sharpen at 100% if you can. And uh, fortunately, I've got the bear's eye right here. If I didn't have it, you can click on this little thing and then click in the photo where you want, and that'll put that in this little panel down here, the detail panel. Now, normally, I would want to do noise reduction before sharpening so that I'm not sharpening the noise. But I don't really see much noise in this photo. Zoom in a bit. Maybe there's a, there's a little bit of color noise in the fur, so I'm going to slide up the noise reduction on color. You only want to go as far as you have to. And I'm not sure, once this gets processed through video, I'm not sure if you can even see the color noise that I'm taking out with. I see color noise in the bear's fur here. You only want to go as far as you absolutely need to with these sliders because the more noise reduction you do, the more you're smoothing things out. So if I go to zero, I can see the color noise. About here at 20, I don't see it anymore. And I don't really see luminance noise. You'd see it in the ears or down here in this dark part of the fur. Well, there's a little bit down there. But this is the slider you want to be careful with because you start smoothing things out that you don't want to smooth out if you go too far with that. So it's better to have a little noise than to over smooth. I'll take a tiny bit of it out. Now I want to do some sharpening. You don't want to go too far, especially on furry creatures. And just, just to test, I'm going to push it up too much. So you can see if I go all the way up to the top with that slider, he gets very crunchy looking. You know, all these little hairs on his back, they're standing out too much. So I'm going to come kind of into the middle with this slider. Now you can change the radius. Usually if it's a portrait, you'd want to keep the radius really small. If it was a building or something, you'd want to make the radius very large. This is the radius in pixels that it's sharpening around any edge. So at the low end, it's half a pixel. At the high end, it's a three pixel radius, which is a little too much for something like this. Like say, if it was architecture, you might be able to get away with that. Now for, for this, I'm just gonna play with it by trial and error. See what starts to look too sharp. I think I might leave it around the, the default near, near one. The detail slider controls the size of the details that are being sharpened. So at the low end, it's only sharpening large details. And if you push this slider up, the details get smaller and smaller that it's sharpening. Now look at the fur. Look at the fur on the bear's back up here when it's sharpened all the way up and under his chin. As if I take it all the way down, it takes a moment for the change to pop in. So I'm just gonna go low with that. And then the coolest slider in the sharpening panel is this masking slider. If you hold the Alt or Option key, Alt on a PC, Option on a Mac, if you hold that key down while you slide the masking slider up, anything that's white is being sharpened. Anything that's black is going to be ignored with the sharpening. So this is how you avoid sharpening your sky or your other smooth areas. And you can see how great this is. I can decide exactly where 
you know, that's looking pretty good somewhere in there. I want the details on his face, but I don't want these parts of the background. Yeah, see, so now it's not sharpening all this stuff out here that we didn't want to sharpen, but it is sharpening in here. But you know, there's something that still doesn't look quite as punchy as I would like, like right on his eye. So I'm going to go up and try a little bit of the clarity slider, which increases mid-tone contrast. If you go too far, it makes things look, well, push it way up just so it makes things look really, you know, extremely contrasty and chunky. But a little touch of it sometimes, especially with an eye, and I'm not going to mask it just onto the eye. I'm just going to bring in enough that it doesn't bother me what it's doing to other parts. But a little touch of that, now I kind of feel like his eye is popping a little bit, which is what I was hoping for. Now the ugly work, which is trying to clean out these twigs. So I'm going to go to the clone tool, the healing and cloning tool. I'm going to start out in healing mode and try to take this twig out of his side right there. Use my bracket keys to make the brush the size that I want. And that size looks about right. I'm not going to try the whole thing all at once. I'll do a piece of it. And it did a beautiful job. I'm going to accept that. Make my brush one click smaller. I'm going to try the same thing down on down on this segment. I'm going to come from below and come up to here. I think it's doing a good job. I'm going to have to take out that little that little piece right there. Maybe see if I can see if I can get rid of that. out this little piece right here. Take out, take out this little twig right there. Piece there. Twig there. That's good enough. You know, there's there's a little imperfection by the tip of that leaf, but I'm not going to worry about that. Nobody's going to be looking at that when they've got this bear's face to look at. So let me just uh, temporarily close that tool. I think that looks good enough down there. I'm going to reopen that uh, healing tool, and I'm going to try to do this piece by the bear's mouth. Now this is going to be this is going to be a harder one because when you have an object that comes up to an edge like that, the healing can be kind of tricky. So the hard part is going to be this piece by the bear's mouth. So I'm going to come in and just try to do that little piece first. It's a pretty good start. I'm trying to pick the target area to leave myself as little as little work to do. That looks pretty good. Let me see what happens if I try to take out this next chunk now. I'm trying to find a piece that will look uh, look natural in here. Target area. And I'm going to just delete that. I'm going to switch to cloning instead of healing and see if I can uh, clone it instead. Um, let's do that for now and then Just finding target areas that seem to get it kind of close. Switch to clone. Now I just have to fix this little mess right here. Sometimes you can just sort of keep cloning and healing until you 
get something that's not messy. Don't know why it thinks that's the spot. Going back to heel. Get bigger, kind of. And toggle the H key to hide those little pins. But if you ever do that, remember that you've toggled it because you won't see, next time you try to use this tool, you won't see what's going on. It just looks like it does something without you knowing why. I get about once a week somebody sends me an email saying, when I'm using the healing brush, I can't see what the tool is doing. It's because you toggled the H key and it hid that and it also hides this while you're working. So just be careful, if you ever use H to hide, remember to undo. And that reminds me, I need to undo this thing that I just did while I was demonstrating that. I'm going to go back to heal and try to fix this little mess I made right here. Yeah, it's a little better. I'm going to close that tool. Now, this is not perfect, but look at the blurry bokeh in the background. It's not so bad. I think I could probably live with that, especially nobody's going to be looking at it that close. You know, when I go out to this distance, that looks all right. I'm going to try one last thing, and this little leaf by his nose is bothering me, so I'm going to do one last little, one last little clone job. I'm going to try healing. First, I'm going to try with no feathered edge on my brush and see how that goes, because sometimes right against the edge of an object, the healing goes crazy. It looks all right. It's, it didn't do perfectly right by the edge, but I think you know, when we get out to a reasonable distance, is it better than having the leaf? I think it's better than having the leaf by his nose. So you can see out of this distance, this just looks like the blurry bokeh background. All right, so here's the original. Here's my edited version. Let's look at these side by side. Here's the original. Here's my edit. Let me uh, get my edit fitted into the frame. So you can see I kept the warmth, even, even maybe in, I intensified the warmth slightly on the bear, lightened up some of the shadows, but not as much as Jeff. Let's compare Jeff's edit to my edit now. Okay, here's my edit on the left and Jeff's edit on the right. You can see how I succeeded in my goal of trying to keep the, uh, the warm colors compared to how the, the warmth of the colors got a little bit lost in this one. I obviously kept more of the dark in the shadows. I didn't mind that. I didn't think he maybe needed to be quite this light on his non-shadowed side. And that helped me keep the warm colors. I didn't crop in quite as close. I put his eye more on the third line in the composition where he's a little closer to the center here. It's a little more branchy stuff over here, which I didn't think we really need. And if we zoom in and look at the uh, sharpening, so you can see the amount of sharpening that I did here is a little less intense than the sharpening done right here. So here's my edit on the left, Jeff's edit on the right. You know, now that I look at this, there's one last little change I want to make to my edit here. So let me get back to the single image view. While I'm happy with uh, having kept the green of these leaves, I think I'd just like the whole thing to be slightly warmer. And so I'm just going to take the uh, color temperature up very little. You can't go very far. Color temperature rapidly gets out of control. You know, if I go up like that, it's crazy. But I'm just going to give it a couple points of warmth. Let me go back to, there's the zero point. I'm going to go just, that's plus six. Compare that to the original. So here's the original and here's my edit. And then here's my edit and here's Jeff's edit. Let's go into 100% uh, on both of these. 
I like the warmer feel. I like what it does to the, the colors in the bear. It just feels more alive to me, a little warmer like this. So there's my finished bear. So once again, there's no right and wrong way to do this. It's a matter of taste. But I've done this in a way that looks good to my eye, and hopefully you learned something useful. Here's a photo that was sent in by my customer, Christian Heap. And this is a photo of his brother, who unfortunately has passed away. And I feel very honored that Christian entrusted me with this memento of his brother. And I totally agree with Christian's edit choices here in what he's done. Making a black and white conversion is not only suitable for a sort of memento photo, but this sort of aqua or light blue or turquoise background is just not all that appealing, unless you were trying to make this into a sort of retro look, which you could do with a certain kind of preset, take it in a retro direction. But I think it was much smarter that he made this black and white conversion. I also completely agree with the crop that he did. You can see over at the right hand of the frame, he's got the reflection in the window, but he cut out this irrelevant piece of wall and he just got in closer. So that's the right crop. And there's only one thing I can see that I might possibly try to improve and I'm not even sure I can succeed. If we zoom in and look at this photo, the original photo here is a bit soft in its focus. And it looks like it's a little sharper down here on the shirt collar. So I think the focal plane of the camera was not quite where it needed to be. And, or maybe he was moving a little bit and that caused a little bit of softness. And we can see that softness is also present in the black and white conversion. Looks like he might have sharpened it a little, I can't tell, but I'm gonna see if I can sharpen it a little bit more. And that'll give us just a single thing to focus on in this lesson. So let me start out by making a virtual copy, that's command or control and the apostrophe key, made a virtual copy, which I will edit on so that I have the original to refer to right beside it. And first I'm gonna to try to match that crop that Christian did, bring it into the edge of the window there to get his reflection. And then on this side, just bring it in as far as we can without cutting into his head. And I think that matches his crop. Now, if this was a model photo or something, I might take that scar out of his forehead, but that's the way the guy looked. We're not trying to improve him. So I'm going to leave all that stuff alone and just try to sharpen it up a little bit. Make sure I'm at 100%. You want to sharpen it 100% if you can. And it looks like this panel is already right where I want to put it, right on his eye. So I'll leave that there. Let's come down to the detail panel. Now, normally I would do some noise reduction before sharpening, just to avoid sharpening noise, but I don't see much noise in this photo. You know, there's a little noise in the background, maybe a little bit here, but black and white looks good with some noise, so we really don't need to remove any. You can see, because this is a raw file, Lightroom automatically applies some noise reduction and some sharpening the amount that it thinks is appropriate. So I'm just gonna leave the noise reduction at the defaults that Lightroom chose. Looks good to me already. And then I'll just mess around with the sharpening, see if I can sharpen it up a little more. So first, I'm just gonna push the amount all the way up just to see what happens. And it's definitely looking sharper, but you know, a little too much in his skin. Usually don't wanna go all the way up into the red zone there. I'm gonna pull it back to more like around here and then see what I can do with the radius and detail sliders. Now, on a portrait, usually you want to keep the radius toward the low end. You know, Lightroom, by default, put it around 1, and that's a pretty common place. Let's see what happens if we take it all the way up to 3. He's definitely looking sharp at 3, but a little crunchy. It might be hard to see in the video because these fine details don't come through the video so well. Looking a little crunchy on his skin and his eyelashes and stuff. So you can hold down the Alt or Option key while you move the radius slider, and it'll show you what's being sharpened. If I go to the low end, there's almost nothing that you can see. If I go to the high end, you see almost all the little details, definitely more than we want in his skin. Somewhere, somewhere where I can see the outline of his eyes, but not too much stuff in his skin. So around there, maybe I'll go uh, something in that range. And then I can do the same with the detail slider. You can hold the Alt or Option key while you slide that up. 
and see what, you know, at the low end, there's nothing, almost nothing visible. At the high end, there's very little on his face that's visible too, at least with this uh, radius. So I'm not going to push that way up because we'll be sharpening the little grain in his skin. So I'm going to leave it back down somewhere around here. And then finally, my favorite one, the masking slider. Slide that one while holding Alt and Option to get it to that point where what we're seeing in white are the things I want to sharpen, and what's in black is the stuff that we don't want to sharpen. And there's you know a huge amount of judgment call in there. I don't want to be sharpening the grain in his skin. I do want to be getting his eyelashes and his eyes, his beard. So maybe around there. So let me compare this to the original. Here's the original. It's a little softer. It's probably hard to see this in the video because subtle sharpening details just don't make it through the video compression very well. So here's my sharpened version. It's definitely sharper. I might push it up just a little bit more on the amount, especially because we've got things masked, so it's not going to get too crazy compared to the original again. In fact, I'll put them side by side. Here's the original on the left, my sharpened version on the right, and it is definitely sharper. It doesn't definitely doesn't look over sharpened to me. I might even try creeping it up just a, a wee bit more. Okay, so let me go back to the single, single image view. Now I'll do the black and white conversion. Now the poor man's way to do this is just to come here and click on black and white in the uh, basic panel. But I'm usually not thrilled with the, with the black and white conversion that comes up with. It's perfectly adequate and you can start moving sliders then to dial it in to exactly what you want. But there are so many fun options in presets that can give you some other kinds of feel that I usually don't just go for this one. So I'm going to switch back to color. I go over the preset panel and find a black and white preset. Now, I have a ton of presets. You can see all these from Contrastly that I have in here, which is my, my favorite collection. And I'll put a link to the Contrastly presets down below. Uh, I'm going to look in this Contrastly Noir and Blanc just to see if there's something that looks good in there as I kind of scroll through. And you, some of these have different colored filters on them, some which are way off the mark. Some of these would be easy, good starting points. But I haven't seen any that excited me yet. A lot of grain on some of these. I mean, I'll try a different... I'm going to close that. This category called Retro and Vintage would be something that if you wanted to take advantage of the sort of retro look of this uh, blue wall, you could go with one of these and make it look like an old film. You know, that one's pretty cool, you know. But that's not the direction we're going in here. I, I totally agree with his choice to go for a black and white conversion. But that would be another fun option with this kind of photo. So uh, let's see. I'm going to go. Here's another black and white collection down here. The portrait black and white. I'm going to see if any of these... That's too soft. And probably like a female glamour shot kind of soft. Sepia. Sometimes it takes a while for some of these to show up. I think that one could be that one could be good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna click on that one and then uh, dial it in a little with the sliders. So it's a little overexposed. I'm gonna bring down the whole exposure. Not that far. Bring down the highlights because the highlights on his cheeks and his forehead are a little, a little overexposed. Now I can bring the exposure back up a smidge. Let me compare this to Christian's edit now. Here's Christian's edit on the left, my edit on the right. You can see it's got a slightly different color tone in that preset that I picked, and they both look good. It's a matter of individual taste on that. Let's go in and see how the details look. So mine is definitely sharper, might even be over sharpened. Some of these details around the eyes, after converting it to black and white, it really brought out some of the graininess of some of those details. So I think I might pull the sharpening back a little bit on mine, especially maybe that radius stuff. It looks a little more reasonable to me. 
So there you go, Christian's version on the left, mine on the right. Honestly, anyone could prefer one of these over the other based on the color tone and the, on, on the amount of sharpness. Just totally a matter of eye. I think he did a great job on this. Now here's a very challenging photo that was sent in by my customer, Dale Walks. This is Avalon Bay on Catalina Island off the coast of Southern California, one of my favorite places. But this photo is definitely going to be difficult because it's so underexposed and we need to pull up a lot of light down in the bottom part. And yet at the same time, we're going to totally blow out and lose the sky if we start raising the exposure on this whole photo. So I really need to work the sky separately from the bottom part. And I can't even see what's going on down at the bottom well enough to know how to crop it at this point. So I'm just going to bring the exposure up a little to see what's going on while I make a crop. And then, then I'm going to bring the exposure back down and protect the sky. So first, let me just come into the crop tool. Now I can see some junk over here on the left that I would like to just crop out. Let me make sure I'm unlocked. Yeah, I'm unlocked in my ratio. So I can bring in this side to get rid of that junk. Now how far to go? If I come in here, then this palm tree just pops into the side of the frame sort of randomly. If I'm over here, then I get the junk. So what I like is I like a crop where this palm tree's trunk is right on the edge. In fact, this is easier to see if I go into lights out mode. A lot of cropping is easier. I just tapped the L key to get into lights out mode. Now we can really see how the edge of this palm tree is kind of anchoring this side of the frame. Up here at the top, I'm not sure how far I want to go up. And we don't need all these tall palms. I could come all the way down into here, which you see palm trees. Or if we want to illustrate how tall they are, I could maybe kind of like having a little bit of the leaves of this one up here just to show how tall these palms get. And it also kind of emphasizes the edge of the frame up there. So I'm going to go there for now. At the bottom, we don't need this dirty or wet sand down in the foreground. So let's just take that out of there. And this side looks fine. So there's my crop. Now let me get out of lights out mode so I can see my controls again. That was the L key. Now before I do anything, I need to reset the exposure because I'm going to lose the sky if I just start making global changes to this whole photo. So I could do it one of two ways. I could either protect the sky while I work on the rest of the photo and then come back to the sky at the end, or I could start with the sky and then protect it while I do the rest of the photo. In this case, I'm going to protect the sky and come back to it at the end. So I'm going to come into the masking tool and do select sky, now that we have this nice sky selection tool. And then I'm going to invert it to work on the rest of the photo by checking the invert box there. All right, so all the changes I make are only going to affect what's masked in red. So obviously the exposure has to come up. You can see the sky is not changing while I change everything else, which is what I want. Exposure is going to have to come up, but I think the shadows are going to need to come up also. And I might pull the blacks down to make sure we don't lose those. And I need to add contrast. And now that I've pushed the shadows and the exposure up so much, in fact, now the blacks are a little intense with that much contrast. I'm going to back off on my black slider and let the exposure adjustment do more of the work. Yeah, let's see. I can come up on the shadows a little more, come up on the exposure a little more. And what it really needs, it is so, so cold, it needs to be warmed up. So let's warm it up so we can really see what's going on. Look how that suddenly just made it look like, you know, real life instead of this crazy frozen wasteland. And it's funny, you notice the warmer I get, the more it looks like Southern California. Funny how that works. Okay, so that's a little too much into reality. But that's, that's pretty pleasant. Suddenly this is a whole different world from what we had before. Now, I'm not really going to try to mess with, I don't think there's any point in much noise reduction in this. There's, there's so many little details. It just blurs. It starts to lose detail. You know, if you look at this section, like these plants in the background on the hill there, if I start pushing up noise reduction, that stuff just gets kind of blurry. And I don't really see any advantage of that. I don't see a lot of noise in this that needs to come out. So I'm just going to leave that where it is. Let's try a little sharpening, see if it helps anything. Let me go to 100% before I consider sharpening. No, I don't, think, uh, I don't think it's helping much. You know, this is a JPEG, which is another reason I, I'm limited in what I can do to the sky. And, you know, it's all just, there's not a lot of data 
to work with here. So I'm just going to leave it without any noise reduction or sharpening. It didn't seem to be helping. Now what I would like to do is to bring down the intense red of these jackets because that is just jumping way out and no other colors are that saturated. So I can do that down in the HSL panel. I can just take the red, red down to bring those under control. But then I need to remember to go back and keep working. That's affecting the whole photo because it's not within this mask, but it doesn't matter because the sky doesn't have any red. It's not affected by that. So I've, I've done the work on this particular mask that I need, needed to do. Now what I need to do is make another mask that's just doing the sky. So I'm going to click here, create new mask, select sky. Now this time my changes are only going to be affecting the sky. So the first thing you usually want to try on a sky is the dehaze slider. That's looking pretty nice. Obviously it, it always goes crazy with the saturation and noise if you go too far. But that, that helps bringing a little blue back. Might try bringing the exposure down a little on the sky. I kind of like that actually. It's got a little noise so we can try pushing up the noise reduction on this sky. It helped a little. And let's see what the saturation does. I want to go crazy. Yeah, I'm not going to not going to go up there with the saturation. So let me close that mask tool. Just get rid of that little icon. So there's the before. It doesn't show the crop on the before and after. And there's the after. Before after. All right, I think that's enough for one video. If you guys liked this, let me know and I'll do more of these. If you want my complete Lightroom course, Lightroom Made Easy, you can get it at steeltraining.com. It covers everything you need from the basics of getting started all the way up to the most advanced Lightroom editing techniques. And finally, if you're already an owner of my Lightroom course and you'd like to submit a photo for me to edit in a future video, you can just send it to me by email. It really helps if you also send an edited version that you made so I have something to compare to. And if it's a photo of a person, please attach a photo of a signed note from them, giving permission to use it in a video. I'll put links down below to my Lightroom course and also to those contrastly presets that you saw me using in this video. I hope you found this helpful, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.